From a secret location in Hollywood, it's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Oh my God. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning into the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5-800-TOM. 1-800-5-800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. <laughs> Here we are together again on the radio. I just got back from a whirlwind trip to New York City. And um, I knew I had good seats to the game. And I knew uh, I was in a position where I, I might uh, be spied on television. But I had no idea to the extent... Uh, that I would be safe. Now, Gary, you uh, you were watching the uh, last game play the Yankee the Stadium. Thing. It was awesome. It was better than the game. <laughs> the game. Well, the game was kind of a mute uh, or yeah. a, a mute point. As yeah, somebody a said. mute point. It's a mute point uh, for all intents and purposes because yes. uh, you know I mean, the the Yankees are out of it. Uh, the the as they as they call it in the New York Post, the tragic number is one. Any combination of Yankee wins and Red Sox, any combination of Yankee losses and Red Sox wins totaling one, and the Yankees are out. So they were pretty sure this was the last game being played at Yankee Stadium. No playoff games, no World Series games, no nothing. And so the game was is kind of the least important part of the day. It was uh, being at Yankee Stadium the last day it was open. Yeah, no, the pregame stuff was awesome. The uh, retard and freak parade that uh, they allowed on the field was it had to be the best stuff that I saw all day. Were they interviewing the morons? Down well, no, there? no. They, what, uh, ESPN did all like two hours, and then uh, took a break. Did a, did another two hours pregame from the field, and they allowed, as you know, they opened up at one o'clock, and they allowed everybody to come in and uh, walk the uh, walk the dirt and stuff. Yes. By the way, the line for that you couldn't see this on yeah. TV, and I'll bet they didn't show it. Uh, the line for that went uh, around the main concourse. Uh, like of the uh, lower deck, then it just snaked its way up the stairs uh, to the top of that deck. This is the top of the lower deck behind the uh, field boxes. Then it snaked its way up the ramps up to the next level, taking you up to like the loge level. Mm -hmm. And then the line went, you know, several sections over in the loge level. Then it came down the ramp back out onto the field as you got to the foul pole. Right. So this line had thousands of people on it, and uh, you would have to wait hours, and, and they shut it down uh, like two hours before they were supposed to because there were so many people out there. Well, people like to bust balls about NASCAR and the people that show up at those events. I could not believe how ugly this crowd was, and every other person was like either in a wheelchair or crippled in some way. Because they were probably all there at 1923 when Yankee Stadium yes. opened. It was really phenomenally entertaining. That and every yutz, Vinny and Guido were there in force. Yes. Um, you know, and uh, there was actually a guy at the game who was interviewed in the newspaper today. His name was Phil Rizzuto. That was the guy's name. Get out of here. Does, true. He, does he now work for the money store as well? I don't know. But there he was, Phil Rizzuto, was being interviewed. About well, what the ESPN didn't show any of the pregame, all, you know, the hoopla that they actually did before the game. They didn't show any of that at all. Uh, so the real thrill for me was watching you order hot dogs and drink beers and take pictures. So you were seeing, I was yeah, sitting in the second row behind yeah, home I could, plate. I, 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 it was hilarious. That's funny. It was awesome. So you knew it was me. You could tell it was me. Oh, no, absolutely. Yeah, That's no. funny. Yeah, no, there was no question. And my brother, and I could see your brother. Saw my brother. There. Yeah, absolutely. I, I knew every time you were on the phone or texting someone. Yes, I saw you taking pictures. I saw you talking to the uh, lovely um, uh, woman that was um, uh, bringing food and stuff to you guys. Oh, uh, the one. Oh, yeah. And by the way, that was a trip. You know how sometimes at ballparks now they have waiter service or waitress service or whatever. So you sit in your seat and you order food. So uh, it's Yankee Stadium. I ordered a 
a Hebrew National kosher hot I dog. I knew it was a dog. It was a I dog. Knew, yeah. This was a dog. I, this dog was six seventy five. Looked good on a stale seated okay. bun. <laughs> and how it remained kosher through all of that, I have no idea. And your and your brother got something there too, didn't he? I saw you handing yes. napkins over. He got the chicken yeah. fingers. You saw everything. <laughs> oh, absolutely, it's absolutely true. You really need to know that, by the way. I mean, if you're ever in that camera shot, everybody can see everything you're doing through the whole well, game. What am I, I supposed knew, to do? I'm not I going knew. to the game. I'm going to sit there with my... I mean, did you see Hillary Swank sitting there? No, I didn't see Hillary Swank. That's one thing that I didn't uh, I didn't notice. You didn't notice. see Richard Gere or no. the former ball I did players? see Richard Gere on TV. David Wells, David Cohn. They yeah. were sitting in the crowd. I saw Cohn was... Uh, or was it Wells was drinking beers and stuff? Well, he does that, that anyway. Pretty... That's no surprise. <laughs> All right. Yes, and you you had a, a what was that a sixteen ouncer there? It was, oh, it looked pretty know, good. That, but that thing is, they have to justify the fifteen dollar cost or whatever it is of the beer. So right. you get like a tanker of beer, which is of course flat by the time you get to the end of it and warm, because you know it was that even though it's fall now, it's that early fall where it's still kind of late summer, and it's that fifty six thousand people sticky, yeah, hot. Weather and it was definitely Indian summer yesterday afternoon. I mean, oh, this no. was a hot day. Half the people that uh, ESPN uh, interviewed were sweating profusely. It was uh, it was hilarious. Do to they watch. show John I mean, Miller? Like I thought he looked awful. He had, everybody oh my was god! Melting. It was awesome. But John Cruck probably looked pretty bad too. I could see him sitting down on the field. John Miller's got to do something with that hair. It's like this weird patch of hair in the back of his head that's all he's got left. Yeah, I know. It's very strange. Yeah. He, he's talked to Fernell Chapman. I think he knows somebody who can help. <laughs> But, uh, I mean, here was the most interesting thing of the day that uh, was not on television. You couldn't see me do this. You couldn't see this happen to me. So, uh, literally, they opened the ballpark seven hours before the game began. So, we drove in from Long Island from my brother's house, and we uh, found a, a decent parking space. And uh, we got right into the ballpark, and we started exploring it from every angle. I mean, we went around. The, they, they, now that Yankee Stadium's closing, I can say I've seen every square inch of it. I saw Everything. Yeah, it was strange because I mean, was Reggie was walking around. There was like a, there were a bunch of uh, like you know former players, Hall of Famers, and stuff. Just you know walking through the crowd. And, well, this is what I was going to tell you, and I've got photos yeah. to prove it. So we're up in the upper deck in right field, and who comes along but Spike Lee and Reggie Jackson? And the, Reggie is like right there. I shook hands with Reggie Jackson in the right field stands. You know, he played right. right field for the Yankees, and I'm standing in right field at the Yankee Stadium. So I was like, I met Reggie Jackson. Apparently, he took a tour of those three homers he hit in a row um, uh, in '77. He took a tour of, that, of of every location where they, they landed. Hit. Right, correct. So he was in the black seats for a while. They showed that. Mm-hmm. Well, there was Reggie, and I met him. With Spike Stone, by the way, because I saw him on ESPN. He looked higher than a kite. And, you know, and I started to think, damn it, I, you know, Spike could probably walk around Stone all the time, and nobody would know the difference. I have uh, no idea. That's, that's what I want to be someday. I have no idea. I mean, the thing is, Spike had to find other things to do, you know, because the Knicks have stunk. So he did the, yeah. the filming Kobe, and now he's yes. filming Reggie. Yes, everybody, everybody but, the, uh, but uh, the New York Knickerbockers. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, does the guy ever make a movie? I don't know, and I never saw that Kobe thing. Did you see the Kobe thing that he no, shot? No, I saw him filming it. Yeah. That no, was it. That's all I've seen, too. Yeah. But, uh, you know, and, and people were buying every oddball piece of crap, you know. The, the, you know how that is, you know, the final game. There's like this, some cheap T-shirt with a big logo on it for 25 bucks, and uh, They were showing videos all day long. Videos, you would remember, because uh, Gary, just like myself, grew up in the New York area. And there were videos from the 70s of uh, the former Yankee announcers, uh, Phil Rizzuto and Bill White, yeah. and um, all these other videos. They they conveniently, in uh, reminiscing about the history of the Yankees, completely left out 1964 to 1974. So there was nothing about Horace Clark or Dooley Womack or Fritz Peterson. Didn't mention any of those guys. I don't know those people. Didn't mention Joe Torre. Well, yeah, no mention of Joe Torre. Not at all. Not a guy won four championships yeah. for that. Yeah, we need to talk about him. But uh, Don Mattingly, he got like a brief mention, like three second appearance of him on the video board. Here's the weirdest thing, you know, the Yankees have that bizarre PA announcer who's been there since 1951, yes. Bob Shepard. Correct. And Bob Shepard has some undisclosed illness, and um, so he was not able to be there. 
for the final game. So they have video of him on the scoreboard in center field, and then they had him record. Well, Jeter, uh, Jeter had him record uh, his uh, announcement, but I don't. Did, did they actually play a, a recorded announcement for every player? They played a recorded announcement of the starting lineup yeah. with Bob Shepard doing it yes. from his deathbed. From his deathbed, or what? He's ninety-seven Here, Bob, years this. old. Yeah, yes. just read this. And and by the way, he also did a video where he. By the way, at the end of the game, they they showed a video of of him sitting on what looked like a college campus. Uh, reading a poem he wrote about the demise of Yankee Stadium. <laughs> that dude looked dead like 50 years ago. Oh. He, re- he looks like Walking Dead. He's a walking it's... melanoma. This yeah. guy has spent a little too much time in the sun. Yes. Okay. And uh, But no, here's the oddball thing. Okay, now Bob Shepard's been there so long, and he's so distinctive. Uh, not to have him is like too much for people to take. So they have found, I don't know if they got uh, Frank Caliendo, they they have a guy now who sounds like Bob Shepard. But a bad A imitation. bad imitation. He speaks fast. Yes. Because Bob Shepard, you could edit each syllable and reassemble them as something else. This guy talks fast, but he, he talks like Bob Shepard. Number two. Number. By the way, Bob Shepard, uh, an elocution professor, and um, isn't there an R in the word right. number? <laughs> number two. <laughs> number 12. This guy teaches elocution. It's very, very strange. So none of the violence that uh, you were anticipating occurred? Um, well, I wasn't anticipating violence. I was yeah. anticipating disobedience, meaning did, I was anticipating people. In there. By the way. Did I see one dude making onto the field at the yes, very end? Yes, in right field. Yeah. And the even horses. With, yeah, even with the cops on the horses and everything. Oh, yeah. But there were people there. I'm telling you, they were arresting people all day with screwdrivers and pliers like I told you were going to be there. And there they were. These people were being let out in handcuffs. But the funniest thing, these are all like 56-year-old guys from New Jersey, all with their hands behind their back. <laughs> I mean, you had to see this. You know, you would think they would be like teenagers or gangbangers, but there were no gangbangers at this game because the gangbangers were outside selling the tickets for $3,000. They were not at the game itself. People inside. By the way, another reason the crowd was kind of subdued last night, I think 90% of the people there never go to a ball game and couldn't care less. I mean, even I, I am a not lot a, of families and stuff. I see, you know, a whole bunch of kids and stuff like that. I thought they were just going to be super high, high price tickets. Well, the thing is, though, the crowd was dead. Kind of like the Laker yeah. finals. Remember the we were we were at the Laker finals mm-hmm. together, and remember how the crowd was dead and they mm-hmm. couldn't whip them into a frenzy. Even when <laughs> everybody, the knew the, everybody knew the collapse was everybody, coming. Yes, I know, but I I, yeah, think but I understand what you're saying. It's the stub hub effect. You know, everybody pays a thousand dollars a ticket, and the real fans sell their tickets to the finals to pay for the rest of their season tickets. So you're sitting there next to all these other people who couldn't care less, who never come to a game, they barely know the address of the arena, and there were a lot of people there yesterday. I, you know, do you really think that Hillary Swank and Richard Gere are going to Yankee games on a regular basis? Right. Come on. Uh, Rudy Giuliani was there last night wearing some Fox baseball cap. Yeah, I saw that. What was that? I thought, no, I thought it was a FDNY uh, baseball hat, wasn't it? But it had the word Fox on it. I, I, he brushed right by me. I saw it was like right in my face. Because huh. I was in that bottom area where you couldn't get unless you had tickets. But, uh, wow. Yeah, just a weird experience. And, and here's the other thing, you know. Um, I grew up 11 blocks from Yankee Stadium. I grew up on 172nd Street, and there's 161st Street. That's where I grew up. But when I was a kid, I never sat in seats like this, ever. You know, when I was a kid, I sat in the dollar fifty general admission seats as far up as you could possibly sit. You were up in the dope-smoking crowd. Oh, yeah. yeah. And and I'm looking down, and, you know, it's like there's IBM's box, and there's General Motors' box. There's, uh, you know, uh, the Standard Oil's box, Hess Oil box. But there was a, you know, you could never go down there. So here I am on the last night of Yankee Stadium. It's so uncharacteristic. I really should have been sitting upstairs to have the experience I had as a kid. But it wasn't. I finally, one time in my life, sat in a good seat at Yankee Stadium. I couldn't get it out of my head that... Most of those people around you, had they known how you feel about the Yankees, 
probably would have collectively or New York. removed you. <laughs> yes, correct. Yes. Yeah, it was. It seemed rather ironic. My brother's a Met fan. At least yeah. he was smart enough not to come wearing a Carlos Beltran jersey. Yeah, which is what saw he would... a couple goofy people show up in like Phillies jerseys and stuff. I it was no one cares bizarre. about the Phillies yeah. jerseys. It's the Mets jerseys. Yeah. And uh, even my brother was smart enough not to. Nobody wear... in the Red Sox anything. No. Yeah. No. No. That would have been balls. Oh yeah. By the way, I, I will give the management of Yankee Stadium some credit. I will give them some credit. Um, they did not, even though the ballpark opened at one, my brother and I are like, great, let's hit up the uh, beer stand. Let's go. No beer until 6 p.m. No. That's right. Oh, I would have been terribly my brother's disappointed. Like, my brother's like, <laughs> now I wish we didn't come in so early. Right. He, you know, he wanted to go like up River Avenue somewhere to like the bowling alley across the street. Right. One of those fine establishments in the neighborhood of Yankee Stadium. Right. One of those joints with no windows. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Hey, oh, my God. Just awful. Wow, no booze until two hours before the game? No. So we were literally there for over 11 hours yesterday from 1 p.m. till midnight. Now, afterwards, it seemed like a big letdown. To me, on, on television, it seemed kind of ridiculous. Like, they had nothing planned, and they played freaking New York, New York, 100,000 times. It Wasn't there another song they could play? I'll never be able to listen to it again. And I'm a Sinatra fan. Well, or they could have played another version of it. Right. I don't know, Liza something. Minnelli? I don't know, something. But, um, no, they even announced during the game, they said, please wait till after the game for a special something. And, you know, what was it? Derek Jeter says, uh, thanks a lot. Right. Uh, it's been great. We're going across the street. Well, that was worth waiting for. And then to watch them walk around the field. No. It was definitely a letdown. In fact, I, I will be honest with you, we... Uh, we we skipped town. Yeah, saw a lot of people doing that. We had to get to the uh, Major Deegan. We had to get out of there. Was it a nightmare? Getting out of there? Yeah. No, because everybody was staying to see oh, what yeah. was going to happen. And then and nothing happened. I guess everybody was waiting for that announcement, telling them they had to leave, or waiting to see the padlocks go on the place. I don't know what they were waiting for. But... Uh, yeah, it was, it was just an interesting experience to go to Yankee Stadium and see this and see the big deal being made out of it. Because, um, yeah, I mean, my, my brother said, uh, you know, it only this would only happen in the United States. He said, uh, could you imagine, uh, you know, in Rome they announced there's going to be a new Coliseum built. Right. And then after it's completed, they take the wrecking ball and knock down the old Coliseum. I mean... You know, it's not like this real estate has all this value. It's the South Bronx. It's a toilet bowl. Couldn't they leave the stadium up? But uh, I guess there are community activists who wanted a park. Where are the kids going to shoot up once they, uh, exactly. they took away that park to build the new Yankee Stadium? They need another park. So they're going to build a park where Yankee Stadium stood. It really is. And who's going to hang in that park? I mean, seriously. Oh, come on. It's one of the worst places on earth. Oh, please. Yeah, it's, people are going to be shooting up, and it's going to be pigeon crap all over the place. And uh, seriously. I mean, they might as well just build, like, a raping station there and uh, have a uh, you know, rubber hose area where you can just tie your arm up and start shooting. Step it up. Well, if anybody's got... Uh got the game TiVo, uh, especially in HD. They're in for a Tom Likas fest. Yeah, I'm in the it's second great. row. Smoke yourself a bowl and count how many times Tom's on the screen. It's awesome. Would it make a good drinking game, maybe? Oh, definitely. Oh, yeah. Definitely. In fact, go straight to uh, uh, the bottom of the fifth where they do this feature on uh, what kind of pitches the uh, pitchers are throwing, and you're in every single one of of the uh, of the pitches. You have stages doing, of stuffing doing, yes, my face. Exactly. <laughs> it's great. It's great. It's like you doing the robot, but there's like, you know, you got different stuff going on. I was taking pictures of myself. Yeah, I saw that. Yes. It was kind of odd looking. Yeah, I know. Uh, but who knew? I mean, again, how, you can't sit there and worry about this. I'm sitting in the second row. There's yeah. cameras all around. There's ESPN people all around. You had something stuffed in your pocket, your breast pocket. I saw that. My phone. Yeah. No, some big white thing. You, you, oh, you it was the tickets. It? Yeah. My oh, ticket stuff. There you go. Well, yeah, that you were watching. No, I'm HD. telling you, I can see the whole damn thing. Love it. Good thing I recorded this thing. It was Sony Bravia, man. It was like uh, it was like being it. there with you. It was it was great. I love it. The hype. We'll take a break. We'll come back and uh, boy, more fun on Wall Street today. We'll talk about that and what they're planning on trying to do about this. Oh boy. 
What a mess. It's all coming up. Tom like 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom like Everybody should listen to exactly what you say, and if they do follow it to the T, then it'll work. Period. That, that's it. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. All right, stuff is going on. Now, you know, everything on Wall Street has been just going haywire. And uh, today, the Dow Jones Industrial Average dropped another 373 points after going up to the roof on Friday. It uh, was up 371 points on Friday, down 373 points today. And uh, oil went up the most in one day in history. Did you know this? There you were saying, oh, yeah, oil under $100 a barrel, gasoline prices are going down. Guess what? Oil jumped like $25 a barrel today in one day. Other commodities such as oil, gold, other precious metals went way up. Now, why is that? It just seems that Americans are so stupid about economics and money. It just takes a, a little economics lesson here. Now, you see what happened is this. The government has now uh, been working on a plan to bail out not just one insurance company like AIG or a uh, brokerage firm on Wall Street uh, like Bear Stearns. Uh, the government now is preparing a package to bail out anybody, these are banks, mortgage companies, loan companies, anybody who issued bad debt, which could be mortgages, it could be credit cards, whatever. Uh, the current estimate is that $700 billion of your tax money will be spent bailing out all of the barracudas who went out there and gave loans to anybody and everybody. Now, let me tell you why I get pissed. And, of course, this is probably why uh, people who invest in the stock market are all running for cover. First of all, where's the government getting $700 billion? Where are they getting $700 billion? We currently are about $500 billion in deficit for this fiscal year. Where are they getting $700 billion? And you know where they're going to get it? The printing press. That's what's going to happen. In order to pay for this, they're going to have to create money out of thin air. And that means every dollar you have will be worth less. The more dollars there are, the less yours are worth. The more money we spend that we don't have, the less your money is worth. And what does that mean? That means the price of oil goes back up. Look, $25 a barrel in one day, the most in history. Based on this, oh, this is going to hurt you. You think it's good. It's going to hurt you. And here's what I, I really get pissed about. And I'll bet there's a lot of people who agree with me on this. People who are responsible, people who don't borrow more than they can afford to pay back. Some people don't borrow at all. People who save before they buy things. People who live beneath their means, I consider myself, believe it or not, one of these people. Because although you hear me talking about my, my house in Santa Barbara County and things like that, you know, it took a lot of coupon clipping, a lot of Costco trips, a lot of cutting back in other areas in order to be able to do that, in addition to making a good living. Um, I saved, I invested, I planned. I didn't buy a house five years ago, even though I could afford it. I tried to be a responsible person. And I know other people who are responsible because they had no choice. For example, I'm willing to bet we have a lot of people who listen, who listen to this program who wanted to buy a house, but because of the price of houses the last five or six years, couldn't afford one. So they continued to live in apartments or condos or live with their parents, or whatever they did, waiting for their opportunity to finally buy a house that they can afford. 
those of you who have been patient and who have been hardworking, those of you who have saved, those of you who have planned, those of you who have been industrious, those of you who have taken second jobs, the joke is on you and me. Because those of us who have been responsible to allow the other morons to go out there and bid up the price of houses using mortgages they couldn't afford to pay back, everybody now will be rewarded. All the people who are irresponsible will now be taken care of by the government. The government will buy up $700 billion worth of bad debt. Can't make that house payment? You're being foreclosed? The government will take that off the bank's hands. Charge them too much on your credit cards, and now a credit card company can't afford to collect from you because you're hiding from your creditors? Don't worry, the government will take that off the... Uh, uh, the uh, the issuer of Visa, the MasterCard, whatever, take it off their hands. Everybody who's been responsible, everybody who's been a good boy or girl, is going to end up paying for all the people who were not responsible. People who bought houses they couldn't afford. People who got credit cards who knew they had no right to have a credit card. You know what I'm talking about. When you got that offer in the mail of the credit card, and you said, I can't believe it. I've never paid a bill on time in my life. But you took the credit card anyway. And now you can't pay for it. The responsible people are paying for the actions of the irresponsible people. And um, as an investor in the stock market, I'm pissed. As a saver, I'm pissed. As a responsible individual, I'm pissed. People who act badly should have consequences. People who do not act badly should be rewarded. And instead, what we have is people who acted badly. They will be covered by people who are responsible and patient. It's outrageous. It really makes me angry. And, and I've got to tell you something. I have always said not paying your bills is just completely immoral. People love to talk about morality. The idea that the government is going to cover these bad debts... And, of course, they're going to tax us to pay for them. Or they're going to devalue our dollar further to pay for these debts. It, it, it is not fair. And even if you do not understand, if you don't understand how this affects you or why it affects you, unfortunately, you're going to find out. You're going to find out because the value of the dollar goes down. Price of a barrel of oil goes up. Price of gasoline going back up where it came from. The price of uh, taking a trip. You ever want to go to another country? Well, good luck to you, because the when the dollar goes down, the price of traveling goes up. The price of commodities is going up. price of food will continue to go up. Uh, we have uh, more and more inflation on the horizon, because the less the dollar is worth, the more things are going to cost. The more inflation you have, the more likely it is you're going to get fired. Oh, yeah, laid off. Oh, yeah, downsized. Oh, yeah, outsourced. You know what I'm talking about. It's outrageous. It pisses me off. I don't know if you're in the same boat I am. I don't know if you're angry like I am. I don't know if you just think this is no big deal. It's going to be a big deal to you. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's one 800 800 8 Six, six. Does this stuff piss you off? Does it piss you off? Jennifer on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi. Hi. I'm angry, too. Why? I'm, very, I'm angry because I feel like these people who got greedy and bought houses they could not afford, I feel like now, now they're living on somewhat of a welfare program that we're all going to have to be paying for now because they can't afford their houses. And I think it's very unfair to the responsible people like 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 you and like myself. And by the way, it's not just that they couldn't afford their houses. Uh, I don't know if you own a house, but I know many people, uh, people who are in their late 20s, early 30s, maybe they got married in the last couple of years, or maybe they just decided they want to put a little money away or build a little wealth. I know people who've wanted to buy a house. And every time they went to buy a house, the price went up. And they had to wait. And do you know why they had to wait? Because people who didn't have any money at all got mortgages, you know, no stated income mortgages, 
mortgage, you know, subprime mortgages. All these people who had no business buying a house yep, were out there buying houses and bidding up the price of a house so that responsible people like you and me could not afford to buy a house. Well, it makes it. It just it ticks me off, and I see now. Like you said, where is this money going to come from when we already have how many billions of dollars of debt in Iraq for a war that that we're, we are having to spend after we blew up someone's infrastructure, blew up, ruined a, 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 a nation that was running perfectly fine on their own. Now we blew it up. Now we're rebuilding it. So that money should be here. And we don't have the money to be doing this. There's just like irresponsible people that run up their credit cards. It's the exact same thing. And then they, they can't, they go bankrupt, you know? That's I am everything. pissed at having to pick up the pieces for the irresponsible morons out there. I really am. Tom, 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 like this. 1-800-5800-TOM. Tom, 1-800-5800-866. Dude, you've given me the roadmap to go over the wall, get in my neighbor's yard, and get my testicles out of a tree. It's the Tom Likas Show. From Hollywood, it's Tom Likas. I'm not just standing up for the little guy, I'm standing up for myself. Have people like me, whether you have money or not, outrageous. I'm talking about responsible people who are going to pay for the irresponsible people. 1-800-5800-TOM, it's our telephone number. Jesse on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hello, Tom. How are you doing today? I'm okay, Jesse. I'm pissed off, bro. <laughs> and you can even imagine. I cannot believe it. I'm barely 30 years old. I thought I have all the world in front of me, making my investments, saving my money, uh, doing a little stock investment, stock research, and now it turns out that I, I have to pay out for all these guys out there. You have to pay for all the irresponsible morons, whether it be the people who bought houses they couldn't afford or got credit cards they couldn't pay back, or the uh, banks and mortgage companies and other irresponsible uh, organizations and, uh, and, and companies uh, that, uh, that facilitated these people. Outrageous. Outrageous. I mean, I grew up in the ghetto. I grew up poor. I put myself through college. I got myself a BS in computer science, decided to be a better person. Work at hard for, I don't know, seven years, save money, got a loan, uh, got my parents to help me out with some money, got my house in Yerba Linda. Turns out that uh, now I had to pay for all, my, like, I don't know, three of my neighbors, they cannot pay their house no more and they're losing their houses. Yeah, now the money will be taken out of your paycheck to pay for them. I just turned around look at this, and look at this guy. Uh, how, how in the, you know where, you guys had a loan for this house, you cannot afford it. No, nope. you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. John on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, how you doing, Tom? First doing time, it. long time. Thank you. Um, I am a 25-year-old. I am a day trader, long-term investor, and I've been watching CNBC, and what I've seen over the last two weeks is absolutely appalling. Um, I think we're turning into a socialistic country, bailing out people who don't know what, they're, what they are doing. You got a company like AIG who infest themselves with bad debt, limited liquidity, and it's up to us to bail them up to out to the score of uh, eighty billion dollars. I don't get what is going on. Well, uh, by the same token, the at least in that case, the government owns AIG. Yeah, I, 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 yeah at least they're getting something back for it. Exactly, exactly. And I don't know the SEC go at the SEC chairman. I don't know what they're doing. Where the country is going to? Well, everybody sat back and let anybody do whatever the hell they wanted. And uh, by the same token, now we're going to get a short squeeze on oil. So I don't, I don't even think this is the end. I think it's going to go up even more because uh, Cox doesn't know what he's doing. Well, it isn't just that. I mean, the main reason I think the price of oil spiked up today, the most it's ever spiked up in one day, uh, is because the dollar is going to crater. When you spend $700 billion you don't have to bail all these entities out, You've reduced, you're going to reduce the value of the dollar. And when you do that, commodities like oil and gold and platinum and silver and copper are all going to go through the roof. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you fully. And I wanted to go on a vacation to Hawaii in a few months. And uh, that's just uh, not looking too good right now. 
Well, John, I understand. We've all got to batten down the hatches now because uh, uh, we're, they're going to ask those of us who are responsible to pay for those who are irresponsible. Pisses me off. Jasmine on the top like his show. Hello. Um, hi. Yeah, I'm really pissed off about this whole thing. I just did, um, like back when, you know, they were giving out loans to anybody. I have a FICA score that's over 800, and I could have gotten a loan. They would have given me a loan on stated income. And um, they uh, they would have given me a loan on stated income. And I looked at the situation and decided that that wasn't a good idea to do. And I chose to do the responsible thing um, because I know that, the only way I could have afforded it is if it, at the prices that the houses were, is if I did a variable rate. And then you do a variable rate, it could go through the ceiling. And I knew that that would be a dangerous thing to do, and I didn't do that. And then, meanwhile, I'm living in this crappy little apartment. And, um, you know, the other day I just looked on the... Um, By the way, when you're living in that crappy little apartment... And you're on, you're watching TV, and you see people going, they're making, they're taking my house away. They're taking my house. Do you feel sorry for them? No, I'm, I'm just, I feel like they're a complete idiot. And, and meanwhile, I just saw this. They're not just, they by the way, by the way, they're not just complete idiots. They're the reason you're living in a crappy apartment. They are the reason. Now they're the reason why the rent's going up. <laughs> that too. Yeah. And you know why the and you know why the rent is going up because so many people like you are waiting in apartments for houses to buy or people have been evicted from their houses and now they're taking up rental properties and so the landlords can demand more. Yeah. Well, there was a thing on YouTube they were saying about, oh, McCain's got seven houses and stuff. And then they're telling some sob story about this woman who lost her house and the interest rate, w rate went up. And I made, I was so mad that I wrote this comment about the, you know, it's not, you know, that she's irresponsible. Well, what do I get for being responsible? I don't get anything. And I'm like, boo hoo, she can't get her house. She, and now she can't buy another house. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. Yep, I agree with you. Eric on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Mr. Tom Likas, thank you for taking my call. Yeah. Uh, it's all about responsibility with no accountability, sir. Uh, it's uh, frustrating. Uh, I, when I was growing, I'm 28 years old. I'm in the San Gabriel Valley. And growing up, uh, my mother's in real estate. My, I have a family-owned home improvement company. And I tell you, growing up, morons that I went to high school with started getting into the mortgage business. And they were all wondering why I never bought a property. Why wow, come I'm not buying a house? And I was taught patience. I was taught uh, perseverance. I was taught, you know, think your way through everything. And now all of those guys are in the mortgage business and now losing their house. And I now am now awarded the privilege of actually fixing up the house they used to own. And it's, it's getting frustrating now because for the first time in 10 years, our company has dropped 20% of our workforce, and we've had to up our advertising by 30% just to make sure because we have to find new uh, new clients now to do work for, and it's, it's just a complete and utter disaster. And I'm sick and tired of picking up people's messes. And that's what we're doing. And we're not just picking up the messes of, a, of an insurance company or a brokerage firm. They're now going to pick up the bad debt of any, any company, any individual who went out and made bad loans and can't collect on them. The government's going to offer to buy those debts. And it's, and it's frustrating because, like your previous caller said, we are turning into a socialist government. And it's, it's really getting ridiculous. And this is one of the main reasons why I vote Republican. Less government, leave them out of it. I personally believe that if the corporate... Well, CEOs let us... Now, look, billions, it has to be pointed out, and I'm not a Republican or a Democrat. I'm a fiscal conservative. Correct, okay. me too. But, but, but I'm not a Republican, and I wouldn't be a Republican. Because Republicans were running things for six of the last eight years. Mm -hmm. They sat by and let this stuff happen and did nothing to regulate it. And, and, and this is what you get. Well, both parties are relatively responsible for this. You know, if, and by the way, that. if the Republicans believe that in no regulation, then there have to be consequences when people act badly. Yes. And, and that's the problem with, 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 and by the way, I got problems with Democrats too, don't get me wrong. But the problem with Republicans, they say, oh, we don't need regulation, let the market take care of the market, we'll take care of everything. But this is what happened. First of all, the market goes in the crapper, and then the Republicans are proposing to spend money we don't have to bail these people out. It's ridiculous. It's a problem that, uh, that, that I think. I mean, that you said that you changed. just said to me, this is why I vote Republican. Republicans did this. Well, no, both parties did this. If you no, understand no, no, but, the but, Democrat, but, but, Democrats... Uh, for most of Bush's time, for most of Bush's time in office, uh, there was a majority Republican in both the House and the Senate. 
And for the majority of the time, the Republic, the Democrats actually had the majority in the House and the Senate. Uh, uh, and even, for, and even and when the Democrats... You, Bush is a failure, okay? Just like Carter was to the Dems back in the 80s. I agree with you on that. And I'm not here to speak party lines. I'm more of a set up that the whole scenario... No, I understand. The situation but, Howard, I mean, come on. You, but then you brought it up by saying, well, this is why I vote Republican. Mm -hmm. Come on. The Republicans have spent like drunken sailors. <laughs> Uh, I, I really, truly believe that if we actually had less government involved in here, we wouldn't have to be running into this situation. Yeah, but Republicans don't. Be, the Republicans say they believe in that, but then they don't do that. Well, I disagree with you on that on several cases. You do. So when they're doing all those earmarks and uh, building bridges to nowhere and all these other things that they, they propose doing, uh, do you think that's all responsible? Well, everything, everything it does have a purpose for it, and if it doesn't make sense, then it gets vetoed out. It's that simple. It's the nature of the beast. Well, I don't think everything that was irresponsible was vetoed out, unfortunately, and that's why we're standing where we're standing. Here's Mike on the Tom Likas show. Hello, Mike. Hey, what's going on? Uh, what's going on, Tom? How are you? I'm doing okay. Uh, you know what? I'm just calling to let you know I really don't care about it. Uh, you know, the government is doing whatever they're doing. Obviously, they you know they know it's going to work out, so let them handle it. But what makes you think they know what they're doing? How do you think we got where we are? Well, yeah, like, like for uh, all those people that bought uh, mortgages, right? All those people that got homes when they couldn't afford it. Uh, I think that the people responsible for that were the lenders, you know, because they're saying, oh, you know, sign for this mortgage, you know, in a couple of years, uh, it's gonna, it's gonna, you're gonna, the home is gonna be worth way more. And uh, now you're paying 1% interest. In but, but why wasn't the government regulating that stuff at the time it was happening? What was that, I'm sorry? I've had enough. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Hear our show streaming live at our website. Press the Listen Live button at BlowMeUpTom.com. The Tom Likas Show.